Hi, everybody. My name is Nishtha Satyam, uh, and I'm the Deputy Country Representative and the Officer in Charge. For those who don't come from the UN, an Officer in Charge is the Representative. I've really been tweeting those roles for about two years, uh, and I represent the uh, UN Women in India. It is one of our largest offices, and we work very, very closely uh, with the government, the civil society, and the private sector. The reason we are going live today and are having this conversation is actually to introduce you to a very special set of people uh, from the private sector. And we have Ganesh, who is the CEO of Tata Power, <coughs> with us today. Ganesh, good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon, and thank you for taking this time. And uh, I have the wonderful opportunity of uh, having you as captive audience. Uh, for probably the next couple of minutes to really congratulate you on some of the things that we have done together. So uh, for those uh, who, who, <coughs> who are listening in to us, the context of today's conversation is to actually acknowledge and congratulate Tata Power on <coughs> demonstrating their commitment to gender equality and women's empowerment by, this, by, by signing on to the women's empowerment principles. For those who don't know, the Women's Empowerment Principles to me actually is a global movement that is spearheaded by over 3,500 CEOs globally to promote business practices that women, that give women greater equality, leadership uh, in companies, both in trade, in supply chains, on the shop floor, and across all levels of the business, uh, and, uh, and really uh, ensure that we create an enabling environment for diverse leadership, for fuller participation uh, within, within a firm. Uh, for you and women, it's absolutely important uh, that we showcase this thought leadership and action leadership that we have had through Tata Power, through all the global platforms that we have access to, to do two things. One, to inspire more of you in the corporate sector to commit to the webs uh, and take action to make the workplace more equal. And two, really, to create a peer-to-peer -peer network uh, uh, to, to, so that we don't end up reinventing the wheel, but we learn really from each other on practices that are working. Uh, so this is also an informal knowledge management system that we wanted to establish, and we are very, very, really glad to have uh, Ganesh here. So before I go on uh, on uh, on what this means to us, uh, I uh, Ganesh, let me bring you in. Uh, and, and also get your understanding of what does it mean to Tata Power uh, to commit really to, to, to gender equality as an agenda. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nishta, once again. Thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, connect. And uh, uh, thanks to uh, UN Women for uh, giving this uh, platform. I think our company, whether it's uh, right now in Tata Power, Delhi Distribution, our parent company, Tata Power, as well as the Tata Group, uh, I think there is a huge alignment and commitment towards the agenda of women empowerment. And uh, for us, it's not only, uh, it's, it's of course the right thing for us to do, but also we believe it makes, uh, it makes sense for us from a business perspective, as well as we believe that having uh, gender diversity uh, ensures that our, our enables our teams to perform better. So it's, it's uh, one thing uh, uh, to say that, okay, we want to do gender uh, women empowerment from the perspective of uh, enabling people, but it's also important to recognize that there is a, a huge business benefit and, and we have, uh, we strongly believe that organizations or teams that are having uh, diversity of many kinds, gender is just one kind of diversity, uh, will perform better than uniform uh, uh, teams that are having very little diversity. So we do recognize this as our core principle and we believe that this is something that has to be adopted and embraced at the leadership level, at the highest level. So whether it's at the Tata Group, whether it's at Tata Power and us as Tata Power Delhi Distribution, that belief runs through throughout the uh, hierarchy in some sense. And we also believe that uh, the, the platform that, that uh, the UN Women offers it gives us a good opportunity for us to uh, really translate the seven principles into action. Because one thing is to believe that, okay, these are the seven principles. Now, how do we move forward on those principles as far as actions on the ground? And as you rightly said, from a knowledge management or helping us to understand uh, what other organizations are doing in India, outside India, and trying to bring those practices into our organization. It's a constant process. I think that is 
nothing like an end or a, a, a nirvana stage there. It's, it's something that we continue to evolve. So those are things that appeal to us as far as the program is concerned. Thank you so much, Ganesha. I actually want to reiterate the fact that, yeah, absolutely. I think the commitment in Tata Power runs across hierarchies. We also have a larger uh, agreement with Tata Power where we work on women's access to decentralized and renewable energy on the ground. Uh, and in mm -hmm. fact, our work in Madhya Pradesh is much appreciated by other states. Uh, and Tata Power has played a very, very important role in even informing uh, uh, how and how we approach the issue uh, both in terms of access design, supply, and we're very, very glad for that partnership because we were never the power experts. Uh, but Tata Power actually put it and uh, it hands up to help us in something that we were foraying, foraying into mm -hmm. at that time. And today we are very glad uh, to help you on something that you're foraying into. So I think the partnership has always been, uh, the partnership and admonition has always been mutual. Uh, and it also runs across levels. Uh, I'm also glad to say that we have uh, the highest level commitment from the Tata Group. In fact, Noel is a part of our Business Sector Advisory Council. He leads a subcommittee for us. Uh, and we are also working across the Tata Group really to mainstream the issue of gender. In fact, we have done, uh, we are establishing the first women-owned women managed factory for Volters in Gujarat. Uh, and are profiling it as a, 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 as a best practice example for the rest of the world to see what it would mean if we hired, if we had greater diversity. I think a very interesting uh, point that you made, Ganesh, is uh, I think homogeneous teams are not fun in general. Uh, homogeneity right. is not fun in terms of thinking, in terms of strategy. Uh, what really, in your experience of having, ma at least managing the Delhi distribution, has been the greatest contribution of diversity? How do you think it really helps from a business perspective? Yeah, so I would say that uh, 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 at the end of the day, uh, uh, we, we interact with uh, almost 17 lakh customers who are mm -hmm. uh, uh, getting power from, from our systems. And uh, I believe firmly that having women in the workplace helps us get uh, a better customer centric culture, not to say that men are not customer centric, but it brings that added element of being customer centric. Also, as far as prioritization is concerned, I believe that uh, women are able to prioritize much better uh, uh, their time, the initiatives that we want to do and uh, the, the gut feeling of what will work and what will not work. I think those are some of the softer elements of what uh, 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 having women representation in the team can help become better. So these are some of the aspects. There are of course specialized skill sets as well. It's not that women are only coming for soft skills. There are professionals who are highly qualified and uh, whether it is uh, chartered accountants, whether it's in the communications domain, uh, commercial aspects, of course the representation of women in the operations maintenance areas are relatively less. But that's a big focus area for us as to how do we increase the representation of women in areas that are not traditionally uh, uh, seen as uh, friendly for uh, women. But I would say that women are equal as professionals in multiple domains and, uh, and, and just from a professional perspective, they bring a lot of value to the organization. Uh, thank you, Ganesh. Again, you know, it brings us to a very, it, it brings us to a point where, uh, you know, obviously, most of the times I'm speaking to CEOs, I, I assume uh, the obviousness of it. But then I, in the course of the conversation, realize that it's not the most obvious reality for everyone. But often there is this, uh, uh, you know, there is this assumption that bringing more women in is at the cost of merit when it is often, not, when it is usually and never not really, you know, in fact, if there is, a, if, if there is evidence to be seen, there is evidence to the contrary that, you know, bringing True. women in has we, actually contributed. Sorry, you were saying something. Yeah, yeah, just to, just the social context that we are in India, the, the, uh, and, I, and I don't need to speak much about that, but there is such a huge load of uh, parenting and uh, just managing the outside of work that is uh, uh, in a way the, uh, it's, it's stacked against uh, women uh, in, in the way in, India still operates. Or, uh, so we believe that it's as much about educating and making that unconscious bias from men because in women empowerment, uh, it's not that, okay, we focus only on speaking to women or communicating with women. It is the men also that need 
uh, a substantial amount of communication in terms of their own understanding in fact when the pandemic started uh, and and we had close to i guess 80 85% of our teams working from home and uh, and and only those who were essential to come to of, or to come to office or to site were coming but uh, i have a daughter of my own and i could see how my uh, uh, my wife and uh, was juggling with managing her school uh, my daughter's school her own place of work uh, my uh, managing me so I, i could see that how it it gets the time becomes such a uh, limited quantity and just managing that prioritizing that uh, i could appreciate what women are going through uh, because of seeing it first hand at home and i think that is true for all men but i think how do we make ourselves more uh, conscious of that how do we do something about it so that we are able to share that burden of uh, work at home and trying to give that space uh, to our spouses or our family so that they are able to do justice to uh, the professional side as well and it's not like it's it's uh, it's there as a best effort basis but it's something that they can consciously focus on and give their best so that is something that uh, we have been uh, communicating to our teams and this is a, a, a constant focus that for us as to how do we also communicate with the men right i think ganesh again that really is uh, the act of a thought leader which is to think the next step i think it's also something that the women's movement has missed out for a very long time because and it suddenly dawned upon us even within the un you know it's only about in 2014 where we said you know let's have a campaign to actually bring men into the conversation because where are we to- who are we talking about whose distribution of power are we talking about so we have to talk to those who we want changed but you also brought in a very important context in the pandemic again it really across the globe particularly for very cultural and you know socio culturally rooted countries like ours has increased unpaid care work for women it is you know tripled yeah. the burden uh, of what women are expected to do uh, and and it's something that we're seeing in all our homes you know just because i work for um women my reality is not any different than your yours me working from home also means that uh, you know people who are working in the home are calling out to me the dog has to be fed everybody is uh, as soon as their work is over they're all around uh, asking for uh, for time asking for ways to handle the house without actually a very conscious understanding that the woman who's sitting on that laptop is also at work has the same amount of uh, has same the same, same level of commitments and and same deadlines level of and commitment the same level of accountability the same pressure to deliver the same Absolutely. peer uh, comp- you know the same competitiveness within the organization and i've often found you know despite working on on this issue i've often found that it become you may it's very easy to go out and say a few things but to really change perspectives at home uh yeah. I, you know in a way that you're changing it for good uh, in a way that you, you know you're bringing in that change as a mindset change uh, has often been difficult uh, and i and i know that the and and like you said i totally i truly believe that you will be go have going out of your ways particularly to also work at a managerial level to understand that while social realities may not have changed tremendously within homes uh, other operational realities have Uh, and for both to adjust to each other uh, is going to be a, a, a challenge because you know many women that i've spoken to actually and it's quite uh, unique in the way that it is played out because work from home is uh, is is a uh, is a mechanism is is a tool is a uh, is is something that women have asked for for a very very long time uh, right. and it was often seen as counterproductive as something that would take away and today when the entire world is working from home i think a lot of us have woken up to the new reality that this is sustainable this is effective and this is productive but right. now that we work from home women's burden actually at home has increased so much that many women are actually opting out hmm. because uh, there is more much there is much more to handle at home so this is a very uh, it's a, it's a situation that is really Uh, contradicted itself from the us that it originally from the us that it originally Absolutely. had of, of us so uh, as companies how are you dealing with i don't even want it to call the new normal because i'm not too sure if i'd be very sad if this is what the new normal looks like but it right. seems to be what we are going to deal with for a very very long time for the foreseeable future yeah the foreseeable future and ganesh honestly 
Uh, sometimes uh, my fear as somebody who leads you and women is, are we at a point where we stand to reverse the gains that we thought we had made? Uh, particularly when it comes to women and work. So as a, C, as a CEO, as a leader, uh, what are your challenges? Uh, up, and this could be gender or otherwise, but what are your challenges uh, as somebody who manages uh, careers, as somebody who has to have a set of people motivated, uh, committed, and at the same time, a set of people who also have very contrasting realities? I would say the biggest, uh, I would not say challenge, but the biggest aspect that at least I personally think about is how do we strike the balance? The balance of consciously empowering uh, uh, women at the same time, not having uh, communicating or having not having to uh, give that uh, perception or uh, push that an undue favor or undue uh, advantage right. is being given. Right. So that striking that balance uh, is, I think, a constant uh, effort for us. And right now we are at about, uh, while numbers are, are, are part of a story, but just to uh, communicate that we have about 20% of our workforce is, uh, is a woman, right? We mm -hmm. still have 80% of the workforce is, is men. And uh, the biggest, uh, I would say not challenge, but the biggest mindset that we need to address is uh, 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 roles which traditionally have very low representation of women, right? For example, mm -hmm. in, in particularly in operations or maintenance or something that is uh, uh, more site-oriented projects. So, uh, whereas if you look at uh, functions like uh, customer care or uh, or even finance, um, uh, human resources, we have a fair representation of women there. So, our biggest challenge is how do we actually create roles in those uh, uh, domains which are not traditionally uh, having women and uh, in a way, those functions lose out of bringing in a different perspective uh, uh, that women can bring to the table there. So that is number one. The second is uh, 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 the leadership positions, right? There are, uh, uh, we have about, uh, right now we have about 25 uh, women who are represented in our distributed leadership structure. Uh, about a few years back, that was less than 10. So mm -hmm. thanks to my predecessors who occupied my chair, that has been given a significant amount of thrust. And that is something that I intend to take forward as well. So I would say that one is the overall number, but also uh, in leadership positions, how do we actually ensure that we position a woman for success, uh, give them the right uh, rotation of roles so that uh, they are able to take up that leadership position. And also how do we actually move uh, away from the mindset of having giving some uh, uh, advantage or undue advantage, but more just thinking about it, enabling the people so that uh, they are able to actually perform and that then takes care of career growth or they are learning, etc. I think I'm particularly conscious that uh, women do face uh, uh, critical times in their career when they either have to take a break and uh, uh, they have to uh, uh, be away from work, handling that transition back to work. I think that is also a very critical priority for us. And uh, that's something that uh, whether it is extended uh, leave, uh, whether it is uh, making sure that their assessments are done in a conscious manner, because at the end of the day, when somebody is in uh, during the course of a year, if somebody is in for say six, four months, as compared to uh, a male counterpart who's been in the office for 12 months, then it's an unfair comparison when we do the performance evaluation. So making sure that we are factoring in all that uh, and, and doing justice to that, I think those are some of the things that we focus on. Biggest priority is to increase uh, women leadership in, in our organization. We, we, uh, we're making sure that that is a, we create that pipeline so that uh, we are able to place women uh, at the right time. Well, thank you, Anish. Thank you for pointing out that nuance because again, uh, you know, it uh, a lot of also, I mean, it's also important to keep the understanding that everything that a company is doing is to only provide an enabling condition. It is not, it is not a favor. It is not something that we, that is not their right. Actually, all that you're essentially doing is building an enabling conditions for women to strive, for women to compete. Uh, and uh, 
competition is a ma- always is just always between equals so yeah. uh, it's very very important that when we are creating that and when you're talking about meritocracy we're talking about an environment where we're also talking about equals both equals in uh, in uh, in issues of equal pay for equal work in issues of what their show, social cultural standing might be and how do you actually accommodate for people's realities um uh, also you know uh, you spoke about women in leadership again one of the issues uh, and some issues are very sectoral unique to you the power sector and it's very perception is also very male you know when no, you think yeah. power you think men you think male right uh, how how do you think and getting women into those leadership positions and use and actually women effectively leading is also going to i think probably take, will take breaking some of those stereotypes again we work from the from sectors like defense to the private sector and we've often seen that bringing women in frontline positions is the best way to break those stereotypes when right. women communicate from a position of authority in decision making it works uh but how much how do you plan to engender the 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 perception of the sector also uh yeah that's a tough one uh nishta i think uh, yes you're right that the power sector uh and uh, particularly where there is a, a lot of equipment involved etc there is a uh, there is a, a larger domination of uh, males in that sector but mm-hmm. i i am quite optimistic uh, the way i look at it is that our dream is to create the or to create an environment in the tata group tata par to uh, create the next indra nuni for us right so uh, uh, i think uh, even even if it uh, even if i take that as an example uh, uh, pepsi was a company that uh, american company uh, soft drinks yes uh, not heavy heavy industry as such but to imagine that a, a, a indra nuni born and brought up in chennai are uh, going to the us and and then making it big there i think that's a real big inspiration right and uh, uh, somebody like her somebody like sudha murthy even right uh, although she did not lead an organization but she's a role model in her own way absolutely uh, uh, so I, i i feel that there are many many stereotypes that not only the past sector that there are people who have broken these stereotypes in multiple domains in life uh, and 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 to think that yes we can play a role in the past sector in giving in making sure that we create that environment as i said to make uh, make it possible for more women to rise in the organization uh, definitely there is no question that a uh, woman when given that uh, platform are performing and it's not something because of the organization only it is their effort it is their uh, insight and their efforts that are really leading to that so uh, uh, i firmly believe and most optimistic that the past sector in in our own small way in tata par tata par delhi we can break those uh, uh, those perceptions and uh, make sure that we create that environment for uh, women to uh, lead the organization as i said our dream is to create the next indra nuri wow that's wonderful again ganesh that's how uh, that's how i think uh, uh, role models work you know and sometimes we feel what does it how does it matter and how does that one voice that one name it's just one in a million it's still not a statistic it isn't qualified right. to be a statistic but how does that even one name help it helps because it sets up a role model you know i'm going to it was it's just a small uh, incident from my own life i think of a couple of days back i was dropping a lousy uh, text message to my mother who has now re- learned how to uh, read or uh, listen to voice text so she has a 3 minute silence before the actual text and she has a 3 minute silence after so you know she just begin to and in a lousy voice i was just you know one of those sloppy afternoons and i was dropping her a message and she immediately wrote back within a second she said don't sound so lousy don't sound so so lazy you know you have to speak like kamla harris and i and i thought to myself that's how it helps you know it doesn't matter whether you're 40 or whether you're 50 or whether you're 10 or 20 but when these names are thrown to you an entire trajectory of what you could be is revealed right. to you you know is shown to you it is shown to you that it is it, it that that you could be that person Uh, if you aspire to be and i think that's what role models do uh, and that's how they help and thanks for quoting that example because again pepsi yes not in heavy industry but again from both in its perception right very cutthroat very competitive 
at MCG very, you know, very different uh, from what you would imagine otherwise stereotypical industries to be. Uh, and again, a woman leading it has definitely, an, uh, and a woman from that context to be leading it, uh, has really uh, set the example. And so have so many women in this country. And hopefully, we will see Tata Power there too. Again, I'd like to congratulate Tata Power for really ensuring comprehensiveness also, Ganesh, this is really to you, and cohesion in both your CSR uh, and Thanks. strategy and business strategy. Again, you know, when it comes to gender and inclusion, it's always a post facto thought. And that is my principal problem with how we conceive corporate social responsibility, because it is an X percentage after having done business irrespective of how you have done it. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and it's important that we bring women, we mainstream women, we mainstream inclusion, we mainstream issues uh, in how we do business in the first place and also after we have done business. So I'm really uh, glad to congratulate you on the programs that you have, on the program that you have with USAID, which is to ensure that you engender the supply chain of power itself and bring women into livelihood opportunities also on your initiative on Dhaga and Unniti, which really looks right. at women's literacy programs, livelihood opportunities, uh, which also then mimics really your strategy now with you signing the webs. Uh, the, the webs also, which makes you a member of a global community, True. where I think companies come together to have a to have a cohesive, a comp comprehensive strategy on gender equality. Where gender equality is not an afterthought, uh, is not what you do to make yourself look good, but is what you do to get better at the business that you do. So, congratulations, really, Ganesh. You are one of the far and few uh, men in the world who think like that. And like I said, there is always a special place in heaven for those who put up their hands first uh, to do things uh, that uh, break stereotypes that have been built over centuries. So thank you. We're very, very, as young women, proud of you. Mr. Uh, I wanted to add one thing that I, I, yeah, I, sure. I, I couldn't share earlier was our, uh, since you touched on our CSR programs and uh, we have, as, as you must have uh, read it as well, uh, we have a very uh, effective program uh, called the ABHA uh, program. And, and this is where we have uh, women uh, uh, typically who are uh, uh, from the uh, community uh, in the, uh, uh, those who are uh, in what we call as live in the Jugi uh, Jopri clusters in Delhi. And uh, they are empowered, they, they, they go through a, a literacy program, uh, they become representatives who, uh, who then we uh, contact to reach out and spread uh, messages about multiple aspects, education to the customers, uh, even some of the simple, uh, commercial aspects like uh, 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 collection of payments. So we educate our women customers to ensure that they are able to in hand become a force multiplier for the organization. And also uh, it, it's something that uh, we have about 850 ABBA workers in, in, uh, in uh, who we touch. And uh, many of them have been with the organization for a long, uh, associated with the organization for a long period of time. And uh, uh, also progress, like for example, somebody starts off as an individual ABHA and then becomes a coordinator. So in a way that is a huge empowerment uh, for the women as well from in that uh, social uh, uh, scenario that they are in. Uh, not only are they illiterate in the beginning, uh, they become literate, then they are able to handle their own finances. They are able to uh, do a lot more than what they were able to do. And then they are also coordinating on behalf of the company with other customers in that area. So it's a huge uh, uh, force multiplier and a positive uh, program that, uh, that, that we have seen. And uh, uh, in fact, recently we have, uh, since the pandemic started, a lot of our literacy programs have been done on uh, digital mode, right? Now, while for you and me, uh, our uh, families, it is a very simplistic thing to have a laptop or a tablet or a mobile phone. But we found that even uh, a simple uh, 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 woman literacy program that we want to run uh, in that sector, uh, there is only one smartphone that that family has. Right. And that one smartphone is taken by the male uh, who is who's probably going out for work. So we had to figure out other ways in which we had to deliver that. We also did a campaign in the organization to, uh, to, for people to donate their secondhand mobiles, which can be used for this purpose. So uh, constantly try to, uh, I think the pandemic also brought in new challenges, but also challenged us to be more innovative as to how do we reach people uh, who we, today for us, we assume everybody has a smartphone 
I have a smartphone. Every member in the family has a smartphone. That's not the case at the grassroots level, and and uh, that puts at its own set of challenges. So I would say that that uh, those are the kind of situations that bring us closer to reality and and also help us reflect on uh, uh, on what's required for us to actually deliver impact. It's a constantly changing, evolving scenario. Absolutely, Ganesh, and I think that's something that we also, I mean, we, we implement a lot of projects on the ground, uh, and you, you hear all of these big reports that talk about, you know, the penetration of technology, the access of smartphones, the penetration of smartphones into rural India, and I think the one thing that we don't particularly question is the ownership and access to these assets in the first place. Absolutely. Also, the time at which, you know, we've had so many instances where corporates have run programs with all good intent to reach to the woman in that IVR. But the point is that is not even at a time when she has access to the phone. The only thing that she's using that phone for is probably making that call back home to her sister, to her mother, when the man does not want that phone to be with him or probably when he has come back from work or come back from his daily daily chores. So these are very, very important insights as obvious as they may sound. I think uh, the other thing about having working on gender is everything that we assume has to be checked. Uh, and I think uh, working on gender teaches you that, and I'm really glad that we're on the same uh, we're on the same page. Uh, again, uh, I again a matter that I would really like to congratulate you on. There are few and far people, and I say this with all the integrity that I have, that work on on dismantling structural barriers. I think everybody. Uh, it's most easy to work on symptomatic issues. You know, it's most easy to just give that one scholarship, not talk about access to land, not talk about access to finance, not talk about access to energy, uh, ownership of assets, movable and immovable. And these are actually the structural barriers to inequality. So I'm really glad that we've joined hands and working on those. And to me, power and access to energy is actually a structural barrier to equality right. on the same footing uh, that access to finance, access to capital and access to land is. So I'm really glad that we are working with Tata Power and this will be actually my last question to you, Ganesh. As a web signatory, I know I'm trying to make this sound like the uh, like the coffee hamper of the TV, but mm -hmm. uh, as a web signatory, and for us, it's a very special place to be and it's a very special place to have you. What is your message to fellow corporates? Because the idea behind the webs is to create a fraternity, a create a community that believes uh, in gender equality, a fraternity that helps each other in a journey that might become difficult at a certain point in time, a fraternity that keeps other, each other in check, where we don't have to play that role, but it is played by peers. Uh, uh, and a fraternity that moves together in the right direction. So as a web signatory, uh, that also represents a very, very big company with very diversified interests. Uh, what is your message to fellow corporates? So the message I have is uh, quite simple. I would say that each one of us in uh, different organizations have, uh, have uh, things to learn from each other as a, as, as, as a, uh, uh, at the platform that web gives. I think it, enables us to share practices, it enables us to uh, pick up the best from different organizations. And uh, also I think that inherent belief that uh, diversity leads to better performance. I think that is the biggest uh, message that one has to internalize. And once that is internalized, that actually that uh, diversity, not for diversity's sake, but diversity which leads to better performance, then automatically uh, uh, our own brains will start figuring out what is required to make this happen, right? I think the first and foremost starting point is that belief that it will lead to better performance or it leads to better performance and uh, then the wheels start moving. So I would say these are the two things that we have a lot to learn from each other as a fraternity and second is how do we actually create that belief uh, in the community that it, uh, diversity leads to better performance. If these two things are uh, in place, I think that uh, uh, we, we have a good uh, starting point. Thank you so much, Ganesh. I think you've, uh, I'm just going to stick to one thing that you said that diversity has a business case. I'd also Absolutely. like to remind uh, everybody who's listening to this that the lack of diversity does not have a business case either. There is no study in the world to say that keeping women out has proved well for a company. It is both a perception, it is based on what our grooming of patriarchy has been, it is also just the difficulty that we have had of breaking 
uh, what we may have put to motion a very interesting statistics statistic is that uh, 50% startups that have generated funding to round or funding round one or round two uh, are either have a woman as a co-founder or a CEO or a COO in one of the three leadership positions. Uh, so a lot of the lack of women in leadership is also uh, is not a default setting. It is a design setting. It is what we have groomed ourselves to be uh, over a period of time. And therefore it will take us intentional actions like what Tata Power, at least Dairy Distribution is doing uh, to really counter years of grooming that actually is not working for us any longer. So thank you, Ganesh. Thank you for reiterating the diversity has a business case. And just to that, add to that, the lack of diversity does not have a business case. So both essentially mean the same thing. Ganesh, congratulations for taking the step forward. Uh, again, to me, I have worked with the private sector for a very, very long time before I worked for the UN. Uh, and I can tell you now from both sides that uh, this is not just signing onto a set of principles, but this is community building. Uh, this is the revolution that we need from, from within. And thanks for being the man who decided to do it. Uh, so for us, it means a lot to have you on board. And this is a relationship that we will nurture and take forward and also showcase to the rest of the world so that we create more like you and we and you are the force multiplier at, in, in the industry. Uh, again, just to remind everybody who's hearing this, we have an award. The UN has constituted an award for companies that have signed on to the webs that are parts and members of the fraternity. Ganesh, I'd like you to apply to uh, and we're looking forward to recognizing companies that are taking steps to uh, 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 intentional actions uh, and not accidental actions to actually make gender equality a reality. Ganesh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you to your team. Uh, and we will continue this journey and this relationship and take it forward and make sure uh, that we see more women in leadership and you actually build the next Indra Nui. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, Nista and uh, team. And I'd like to thank the uh, Tarapa Delhi team for actually pushing this uh, and, and ensuring that we are sticking uh, or meaning this in spirit and action. Uh, and, and really making this change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ganesh. Thank you very much.